everyone. Good Welcome good to morning. the morning show. We're coming to you today on WJOPLP New Report at FM 96.3 on Channel 9 and on New Report Community Media's YouTube channel at ncmhub.org. I'm your host, Mary Jacobson, and today I am very happy to welcome Deborah Green and Jeanette Isabella here. Both of them are volunteers with the Greater Newburyport Ovarian Cancer Awareness, and they're going to talk about their important mission of raising awareness of ovarian cancer and fill us in about their upcoming annual 5K Run Walk fundraiser coming up on Sunday, September 22nd. Being an ovarian cancer survivor myself, I am delighted to have them here, and I very much appreciate their work on this topic. Topic. So first of all, Jeanette and Deb, welcome to the morning show, and thank you so much for taking time to be here to talk about this important topic. Well, thank you thank for you. having us. Thank you for having us, yes. Well, I'm very happy to have you here. So I was hoping that we could start with you telling us the story of Greater Newburyport Ovarian Cancer Awareness, how the organization was founded, when, by whom, and what its fundamental mission is. Okay, we should, Deb should answer that because okay. she is well, the I'm, founder. I mean, one of the co founders. So I had ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. um, it's been 19 years, which Good is wonderful. For you. I am like so <laughs> blessed, I, you know. Um, and my way of dealing with it was pretty much having tunnel vision and just getting through the treatments and yeah. getting to that five year mark. And when I got to the five year mark, I have a good friend, Elaine Carroll, who sadly um, lost her sister Aww. to ovarian cancer. Yeah. So, um, Sorry. That's okay. It's it's hard sometimes yeah. to remember, and mm -hmm. the emotions mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. a healthy thing. Right. <laughs> and it is for Elaine's sister. Yes, uh, she's one of the yeah. uh, the people whose name is on oh, the walk. Right. On the Wonderful. walk. Yeah. Yes, that's great. Yeah. So Elaine and I decided that we'd like to do something to bring awareness to ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. and um, so we um, ended up. We started off with um, getting a wonderful group of women. I think we had about 12 mm -hmm. women to start this. Yeah. And um, in one year, we ended up with, I think, eight events right off the bat, wow. which is yeah. really over the top. We did the um, 5K, and we did a lantern festival, and yeah. we did comedy, show. comedy shows, and we did, we did like, all kinds of things. But now, you know, we are basically focused on... Um, the 5K and the Lantern Festival mm -hmm. as our fundraising events yeah. and awareness events. Well, they've both oh. become institutions. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it's great. Sure. Newbury Port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's a good thing, good yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, right. very. And it started in 2011. So yeah. we've really, this is our 14th year. Yeah, wonderful. Um, and it's it's been a, um, you know, a, it, it's been really good. You know, yeah. we really, I think, brought a lot of awareness. Um, and as you know, you know, ovarian cancer doesn't always have the best of outcomes. So yeah. oh, you know, women don't always make it if they don't they don't catch it early enough. Yeah. And so, you know, this there aren't a lot of us here to kind of promote that awareness. Yeah. And it, we depend a lot on the families as well. Yeah. Um, although they've spent a lot of you know other treatments and trials that are coming out now for mm -hmm. ovarian cancer, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you for that, Deb, and what a wonderful way to honor your own experience mm -hmm. and to remember and honor somebody who passed away from mm -hmm. ovarian cancer, so um, it's an inspiring story. Mm -hmm. well, what about you, um, Jeanette? How did you become involved? Well, I, I've been a long-time friend of Deb's, and mm -hmm. I, I feel like the godmother of this group because oh. I introduced um, them, Elaine and, Elaine and Oh, Jim. you were and the link. It was the yeah, it was the link. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was a nice story. I'm sure they would have met because Elaine is always out in the community, and mm -hmm. Jeb was you know, her wonderful shop is there, and Elaine would have found her. But I, I like to think that you know, the timing was right, and mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a good time mm -hmm. to for that to to happen. Mm -hmm. So. But anyway, you don't say no to Deb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you told me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm pretty strong, and I'm involved in a lot of things, but um, I wasn't going to say no to that yeah. question, or you want to join us. And, yeah. um, and and I love both of them, and mm -hmm. and Deb, so... Um, uh, so that was, that was the nature of my involvement, just to support two wonderful women on this mm -hmm. fabulous venture mm -hmm. and I knew it would be a success mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. of who they are mm -hmm. and and the women they gathered around us yeah. to support the effort so um, that was it I was hooked 
Yeah. Well, there you go. You know, it's an inspiring story, both for the important work that you do, but also it gives further proof that, you know, individuals, small numbers of people who gather together and decide right. we want to do this because it's important and yeah. we care about it, you can start a movement that way. That's right. That's exactly right. yep. So I love the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a power in just having the intention yeah. and then the will and the force and the drive to right. keep going forward and making it happen because yeah. this is your 14th year. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Well, you know, I, I, I know that some of what you do is the, the fundraising and we'll talk about the walk um, later on. Okay. But Another of your important missions is to spread awareness of mm -hmm. ovarian cancer. And let's talk about that some, why it's important to spread awareness of the early warning signs of ovarian cancer. I was reading that more than 19,000 women are diagnosed every year with ovarian cancer. And so why is it important, first of all, to look for the earliest possible warning signs? And what are some of the things that women should look out for? Um, well, it's clearly, it, the signs are very subtle. So, and we tend, women tend to kind of push things to the side um, and, you know, not take, put other people first, I think. Yeah. And they don't always yeah, follow through on their own. training. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the signs are subtle. And yeah. um, in some cases, people really don't have signs yeah. that are even recognizable. But um, I would look, can I share the signs? Yeah, that please do. Yeah, I think for. it's important yeah. for people to know because right. they can be so subtle. Right. And because um, I think you and I were both stage one mm -hmm. diagnoses. And I will never forget the day that I was talking to my um, oncologist on the phone. Um, you know, these days you get your top lab results before yeah. <laughs> you meet with your doctor. Right. And so I'd been looking at it and thinking, what's the stage? What's the stage? I wonder, you know, because I'd seen it yes. uh, on the portal from my health care mm. provider and talking to her on the phone. And she said, well, you know, Mary, it's stage one. That's really good news. She said, I almost never see anybody wow. with stage one mm -hmm. ovarian cancer. So I thought, Yippee! <laughs> yeah, I felt like I won the lottery. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Yeah. So it that just underlines the importance of knowing what mm -hmm. subtle signs to look out for and not to dismiss. Mm -hmm. Because hopefully you can go to the doctor and then dismiss them. But right. don't dismiss them yourself. Don't make That's, that judgment. Right. Look out for these things and just be aware that they can be signs. So please share the list. <laughs> yes, and also just, well, I'll mention that after the list. But um, so if you have blo this is if you have this for a couple of weeks, like mm -hmm. say two weeks. Yeah. You have bloating or pelvic abdominal pain, trouble eating or feeling full is another one. Um, and you um, need to urinate frequently yeah. that that also it can be an indication and some other ones are fatigue upset stomach or heartburn mm -hmm. like i had heartburn but didn't make oh. that connection i didn't yeah. make it until afterwards um back pain pain during intercourse constipation um menstrual changes and um, this is a longer list that's why i'm reading it yeah, so what the recommendation is is if those persist on a daily basis mm -hmm. for two weeks you yeah. go to your doctor yeah and you should ask for because sometimes the thing is it's a part of our mission too is to help women advocate for themselves yeah so they don't get dismissed, dismissed yeah, yeah. Yes. um and we all want to hear, oh, it's nothing. Don't yeah. worry about it. It's oh, nothing. No, right. It's a real no, temptation. So, oh, good. I don't have to worry about this. I'm leaving now. And, yeah. in fact, maybe you do need to worry about it. It doesn't mean that you have ovarian cancer if you have all these right. symptoms or some of these. But you want to make sure that you don't have Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So um, what, then what you, I would ask your doctor is for a pelvic rectal exam, mm -hmm. um, a transvaginal um, ultrasound, mm -hmm. and the CA-125 blood test, right. which they don't use for screening. Mm -hmm. um, because it has so many ne po um, false positives and false yeah. negatives. But in this case where you already have symptoms, they could do that test. And um, if you already have ovarian cancer, then they use that as a marker right. and we get tested regularly. I'm sure right. you do too, Mary. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Every three months. Yeah. It stays so, on that. Yeah. yeah, so they want to watch those numbers. But if the, if the doctor says, we don't, I don't really think you need, need that, mm -hmm. I would be persistent and say, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Why, why do you think this isn't something to be concerned about? Yeah. So I would really advocate for yourself. Um, and not let them pull, push you off. And I think most doctors, if you ask directly for this, mm -hmm. they're going to respond. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they may think in a box, you know, that, mm -hmm. that, that if you're seeing somebody that's um, maybe for gastrointestinal issues, they might right. not be thinking of ovarian cancer. They're right. going to be thinking of, you know, other things. That's so right. um, you really have to speak for yourself mm -hmm. um, and push for these tests if you feel like, you know, you have these symptoms and they've been going on for yeah. two weeks. And then ask for, you know, to see a, a GYN um, 
uh, uh, oncologist, mm -hmm. I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to say, someone yeah. that specializes in that area and yeah, have them um, pursue it with you if any mm -hmm. of those things come up positive. Yeah. Um, so, and so the... Yeah. The, well, so I think that's Im such an important um, list of things to look out for. And the point you make that I think is really important to uh, pay attention to, any one of those individual signs would be easy enough to sort of um, rationalize mm -hmm. um, and deny. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if they go on for at least two weeks, that's a sign. Um, that something is happening and you should pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully it's not ovarian cancer. But as long as there's a possibility yeah. Yeah. that it could be, mm -hmm. then, yeah, go. Um, right. Go find out because um, there's nothing to be gained from not finding out something that could save your life, right? Right, right. <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's hard to argue with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's the bottom line. Yeah, right. And then I love what you say about advocating for yourself. Because I think um, oncologists, especially gynecological oncologists, the specialists that I went to see, fortunately, and I love my oncologists, you know, and they know what to look for and they can add up what the, they all know that these are signs. Yeah. But somebody, a diff, doctor with a different specialty or primary care, these things can all be signs of many, many other right. things. Mm -hmm. And so to push and advocate for yourself to say, yeah, but I, I, um, you know, I, I looked at the GNOCA list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I heard Deb read the list on yeah. the morning show yeah. <laughs> and I know that it can be. Mm -hmm. And so I also know that there are specific tests that can provide me with either reassurance or possibly a life-saving early Diagnosis right. and early diagnosis, right. as we know, is That's, life saving. Yeah. Um, and so, those are powerful arguments to make. Mm -hmm. And I love your, your uh, recommending the question why not? Mm -hmm. What possible reason could there be for not giving me That's the reassurance right. or helping save my life? Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Uh, and the, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I think you're 100% yeah. right. It's like, put it, you know, just have them explain why they don't think it's necessary. Right. I mean, there might be a really obvious reason that's pretty clear but right. um if, if, if you have those symptoms why not get it checked out I why mean, not get yeah. it checked why out not. right yeah. i do want to add something that's really mm -hmm. important that people get confused about that when you have a pap test that is does not test you yeah. that has nothing to right. do with ovarian cancer so you can't uh, like, women will sometimes say when i hand them this bookmark yeah. with all these symptoms well i had a pap test and i'm like yeah uh-uh yeah. That doesn't count. No, it's that not, doesn't mean that you're free right. from... You're not protected because yeah. you had a, yeah. a pap smear. It's, yeah. And just knowing, you know, that these signs can be subtle, um, I think is it just kind of underscores the importance of paying attention to mm -hmm. any of those um, signs um, because you never know. Mm -hmm. So, and I love what you say about, I think, learning to advocate for ourselves is important in every aspect mm -hmm. of life, but particularly when it applies to our own health. Yeah. Well, because, yeah. you know, a, a lot of... People are brought up, I think it's less so now, but a lot of us were brought up with the idea that the doctor knows oh, yeah. and you don't, you don't push back. Yeah. And I did have some things that Deb thought were worrisome, so she, she insisted that I go to the doctor. And as I said, you don't say no to this woman. <laughs> so I went, and that gynecologist did not want to do the test. Oh. And I said, uh, and I, and I just, I mean, I'm not a shy person. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a survival trait. <laughs> yeah, and I just pushed, and she was, yeah. she was not happy, mm -hmm. and that, that was her issue. And so, you know, it, they can trick you, and especially mm -hmm. a woman telling a yeah. woman that, oh, you know, no, that's not, uh, no, I, I, I've got yeah. somebody who's telling me I have to yeah. do this, and I trust her. I don't know you. She was brand new to me. Yeah. I said, I know this woman. I don't know you. Yeah. I want the test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it was negative, and that, as, you know, that's the outcome I wanted, but... Um, but that pushing back is yeah. so important. But you have the right and the need to get the negative outcome. It's that, not that the right. moral of that is you took care of yourself, yep. you advocated, yep. you have every right to ask for these tests. That's I think right. you're right about the kind of the more, it's, I think it's changed somewhat yep. the idea that the doctor has the absolute authority yep. and somehow, um, you know, they have the right, they have the right, they have the privilege of, of telling us 
you know, right. uh, pretty much everything that's going to happen, yeah. whether we like it or not. Yeah. But they work for us. That's right. <laughs> exactly right. We yeah. employ them. Yeah. That's right. And I think that there have been changes in the way that doctors are, are trained now. Right. So yes. I think there's much more of a movement it, happily toward uh, being sensitive and responsive right. to um, patients' concerns right. and to having people advocate um, for themselves. Right. Yeah. Um, so there's been some changes, but you're absolutely right. I think right. that was the traditional model. That's yeah, how I was raised. You know, you put the white yeah. coat on, and there's something oh, godly yeah, about right. you. No, I don't right. think so. Yeah, right. <laughs> so um, I view it as a partnership. Mm, and if we're not if right. we're not partners, then I'll find somebody else. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Right. And I think most doctors do. I mean, I don't think they they won't appreciate you. Mm -hmm. pushing them in a, in a direction yeah. that you need. They need to hear from us. They yeah, don't know. They can't right. read that's our right. minds. That's and again, right. they have a certain criteria that they're working in, and it might, right. they're just not maybe stepping outside of that right. um, mm -hmm. box that they might be in. It. Right. You know, they, they have so much that they have to deal with right. now. Right. Um, but doctors, too, have everything to gain should there mm -hmm. be an actual an early stage right. of ovarian cancer mm -hmm. going on. They have everything to gain themselves right. as well mm -hmm. um, right. from finding out early because, mm -hmm. I mean, doctors do care about your health. They do. Even. Right. And, and certainly um, no one, no doctor would want to find out later on that they'd missed something. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that's a point to make as yeah, well exactly. that everyone benefits when the, an early diagnosis becomes possible, yeah. um, because a, a patient is advocating for herself. Yeah. It's a good outcome no matter what. It is, including the insurance right. companies. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. They have benefits totally. in early yeah. diagnosis as right. well. So. Um, well, I know that um, in addition to fundraising. Um, um, GNOCA has other kind of services um, that they offer. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about what those services are that you make available to women dealing with ovarian cancer and, and how can women find out what's available and how to gain access to your services. Oh, that's a question for Deb because she, <laughs> she actually heads up a uh, an, an Dis encore group. A, no, well, not the encore, the discussion group. Oh, all right. Well, well then what's encore? Encore is um, a great program that the YWCA does mm -hmm. oh. in, in Newbury. Well, right. uh, there's several Ys that do it, but Newbury Port Y. Oh. Um, and so if you have cancer, originally it was for breast cancer and uh -huh. ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, Eileen Grady runs that program, mm -hmm. and it's fabulous. It's free. Oh. You get to go, like you could go. Uh -huh. And they, she, they do an on-land strength program. Um, strengthening program and then they do a, a, a warm water pool oh, program so you okay. split it and then after yeah. you complete the program I think it's a 12-week program uh -huh. um, you can do the after um, encore program which oh, means that okay. you, they have different times that you can go in the pool uh -huh. um, and they they run um you know exercises that you do in the warm water pool and okay. it's just um, well, now it's all cancers, so mm -hmm. it's not just ovarian yeah. and breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But it's a fabulous program, and oh, it's very relaxed because you're t you're getting support, but you're doing it in a way that's very relaxed, and you're, um, you know, doing these exercises. You're getting which exercise are as well. Right. But, yeah, so. yeah, it's really um, a, a great group of mm -hmm. women, and Eileen does a fabulous, I mean, a really good job running yeah. that program. Do you uh, participate in that? I did. Right now, I'm not, but okay. I did for the, uh, well, quite a while. Yeah, yeah. that's what I yeah. guess that's why I thought. Yeah. yeah. I sh well, that's. I, Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you for but telling us about yeah. it. Yeah. And the why, yeah. so we did start a discussion group because uh -huh. there wasn't, um, at the time when we started this, women want, that had ovarian cancer wanted a, a, a group that was yeah. focused on ovarian cancer and not necessarily a broad, you know, all the cancers. So um, the why let us use their uh, space mm -hmm. to have um, this discussion group that we would mm -hmm. have once a month and people would come. Then That's COVID right. came. So when oh, COVID came, yeah. we had obviously that's well, everybody was in lockdown. Yeah. But even after yeah. that, it was, you know, women in treatment can't, you know, be exposed. Yeah, um, they're, right. You got to watch out for yeah, your, their immune, immune systems system. are compromised. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we started doing it um, um, on Zoom. So we, oh, yeah. so we do have that. So mm -hmm. once once a month. Right now, it's the second Monday of the month mm -hmm. from ten thirty to twelve. We have a. Um, discussion group that okay. women come on and talk right. and, and share uh, experiences yep, and share yeah. experiences now there are a lot more opportunities out there if you go to ovations for the cure mm -hmm. that's the um, nonprofit that we're under their umbrella okay and 
that website has lots and lots of mm -hmm. information on um, ovarian cancer mm -hmm. and services mm -hmm. and um, that's who we partner with and mm -hmm. like for a meals program that we would okay. so yeah. say you were in treatment you wanted help with um, meals we okay. you get once a month you get a delivery of, of enough meals to cover you for the month and your family oh, they adjust the size according to what your the particular woman's needs are and mm -hmm. um, they drop it off once a month Wonderful. and yeah yeah, it's a great yeah, program, exactly. and it, you know, great. as you know, going through chemo, it you know can be exhausting, mm -hmm. um, and you want to yeah. eat. <laughs> you need to eat. <laughs> um, so that program, um, we you know, so women in this area, if that happens, you know, if they if they're in treatment and they want mm -hmm. that help, they can we can That's get them the help yeah. um, through ovations, mm -hmm. um, and they have other um, support groups mm -hmm. that are available. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot more going on than when we started in 2011. Oh, yeah. There's lots of there's different groups yeah. out there yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so, so there's a variety of kinds of services, everything from emotional support, mm -hmm. knowledge support, mm -hmm. information sharing, yep. um, and also tangible pragmatic sources mm -hmm. of support, like the mm -hmm. meal program you're talking about. Yep. And yeah. so um, Ovations for the Cure um, has their own website. And also, your website would point people in that direction as well. So. Yeah, our website right talks about what we do locally, yeah. and it talks about um, you know the the fundraising um, yeah. and the discussion group and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But we often refer people back to Ovations because right. they have so much information, and yeah. she refers people to us in this area, right. you know, so they can right. connect with people locally. Um, so it's it's a good partnership. Absolutely. Um, well. Part of what you do then is the fundraising. So mm -hmm. let's move on to that because your 14th annual, that's impressive again, let me repeat that, your 14th <laughs> <laughs> annual 5K Run Walk is coming up on Sunday, September 22nd. And May, perhaps you could show the poster just briefly because it's a good looking poster you have for that while we talk about this. So tell us about the, um, the 5K run walk. Um, what happens? You know, how do people register, and where do the funds go that you raise? Okay, so the 5K um, starts out at Michael's Harborside. It's okay. on September 22nd. It's from 10. Well, the race time starts at 10. So mm -hmm. if you're running and you want a timed race. You, that's when it starts. 10 okay. Not 10, you don't come <laughs> and register at 10. <laughs> the start time is 10. Um, is 10? And registration starts as early as 8.30, okay. or you can go online and register. And okay. if you don't want to run or walk, because mm -hmm. we have lots of teams, so if you want to mm -hmm. create a team for someone that's mm -hmm. either going through treatment and you want to support them and mm -hmm. honor them, or you want to support someone that passed, mm -hmm. a woman that's passed, um, you can create a team. Um, and they, you know, it's, it's a great way to grow that awareness again sure. um, and sometimes we you know we are depending on the, the, the families a lot right. of times to continue mm -hmm. on um, so those are uh, so, so there's the teams in the run and we have great prizes so mm -hmm. it's timed and we have um, great gifts this year for the team so everybody great. on a team is going to get this cool gift which I'm not going to tell you what it is it'll be a surprise uh, it'll be a surprise but it's cool it's cool <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the walkers go through downtown Newburyport, mm -hmm. and the um, the five k runners uh, go in the opposite direction up Merrimack oh. Street. Okay. So um, so we originally were just a walk, but we expanded it to um, a, a race mm -hmm. to draw in more people. Okay. Um, yeah. That um, might just want to run, but also mm -hmm. it's also in honor of Paula Holm, which mm -hmm. is she was an avid runner. She oh. was Bruce Vogel's wife, and she uh -huh. passed from ovarian cancer. Oh. So uh -huh. we started with Jackie, which we still mm -hmm. honor Jackie. Mm -hmm. Jackie Poor, but mm -hmm. we've added um, Paula Holm, um, and she was very connected to the Winner's Circle in Salisbury. Oh, okay. So the Winner's Circle often helps us with great. with the race. Um, so it's in honor of her as well. Well, that's great. Yeah. And the funds that you raise, tell us about how you channel those. Um, those funds, all our money basically goes back to Ovations for the Cure, mm -hmm. um, and then they. Um, you know they do the they do the other thing they do which is really wonderful is a symposium once a year oh. so if you have ovarian cancer mm -hmm. um, and you're being treated 
uh-huh. or even if you're not being treated, um, you can go to the symposium. It's in November. I don't have the date on hand, but if you okay. go on their website, you'll yeah. see it. Okay. And it's fabulous. Uh-huh. I mean, th- it's in Boston. Um, you get a lunch afterwards. It's early enough in the day so that it's not exhausting for people that are yeah. in treatment. Yeah. Um, and they have, last year they did, they talked, they had all different doctors. Dr. Matalutis is um, from uh-huh. Dana Farber, and she had doctors talking and explaining about the different um, trials that are out there um, and, and explaining where yeah. they're at with them and oh, what can be done. So it's very, very educational. It yeah. gives a lot of information. And it's opportunities for people to ask you mm-hmm. know, questions. They're encouraged to ask questions. Yeah. Um, it's it's um, just an excellent program. The other thing that I just want to comment, my feeling is I would love to see us they, they haven't come up with it yet but a screening test that actually wouldn't that be great that would yeah. be like so huge and they Absolutely. are working on it that yeah. came up at the last symposium but yeah um, it's it you know they haven't yeah they haven't gotten it down yet because yeah. that would create a situation where so many women could be diagnosed early, early on yeah that's right and make a huge difference on outcomes. hugely life-saving yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that so that's what, one of the things yeah. we're hoping for so so their money goes to research as mm-hmm. well so about a third of the money goes to research Great. a third of the money um goes to you know educating um and awareness all of yeah. almost everything that we print has the signs and symptoms of yeah. ovarian cancer yeah wonderful um, and um, so research, and then the, the community, you know, helping women with mm-hmm. with the Helping Hands yeah. program. There's um, all kinds of, you know, the discussion group. Yeah. So there's different things that are um, available for women mm-hmm. that are struggling with it. Yeah. Um, well, the symposium sounds great because they are making yeah. advances all the time, and yeah. I agree it would be wonderful if there were screening tests that yeah. was reliable because it really would be a huge yeah. lifesaver. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, uh, the other, uh, oh, can go I, ahead. I yeah, just, of course. I, just, sorry. I know we're talking about the 5K, but I also want to mention because people don't always realize that we put on the Lantern Festival oh, yes, every year, which is enormously wonderful and enormously popular. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's and a, it's ju- been June now. It used to be in September, but I know right. it's been moved forward in the year. Go we, ahead. No, no, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. no, no. It's such a lovely. Well, you know, it's such a lovely way. First, it's just beautiful in the evening to have yeah. this. Um, lanterns that people have lit float out on yeah. the frog pond at Bartlett Mall and you can buy the paper lanterns ahead of time and then you can memorialize them, you can personalize them with the names of whoever you might want to um, remember um, and it's a lovely event and and I think uh, I think you're right, probably a lot of people are not aware that mm-hmm. your organization sponsors that right. and it's also a fundraiser for the very things you were just so eloquently describing, Deb. So right. have I done justice to it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. What was the um, so the Lantern Festival? Um, you can also decorate your lanterns there. Yeah. We have all the tables set up, right. and we have live music. Mm-hmm. So it, it. But what our challenge is, we we'd like people to understand where the money's going, and we yeah. want to make people aware. We want to use it as an opportunity to create that education and mm-hmm. awareness of ovarian cancer. At the same time, we don't want people to feel like they have it. It's only for ovarian cancer because right. people come for all kinds of reasons. Oh yeah. Mo- right. Usually it is to memorialize somebody or to support somebody that's struggling mm-hmm. with something. Yeah. But it's also. Um, it, it 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 it's you know people might want to make a wish for the future like right. these days yeah. we want to make a wish a positive yeah. wish for the future That's right. right so people use it for that way mm-hmm. but it's very it's just a very moving event oh, yeah. and um, we will be continuing it in the spring now we changed mm-hmm. it because they were going to redo the mail and we had yeah. to change it to to um, June. Um, but in, in some ways, it works out better for people if we do it in June. So mm-hmm. that we're going to be continuing. So look for it next mm-hmm. year. That's all. okay. Yeah. No, it's just magical in the evening because the little lanterns are out there in the dark and they're like fireflies floating on the water. Yes. So, mm-hmm. um, well, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is I know from your website that you're always interested in new volunteers mm-hmm. for yes. GNOCA, and so I thought maybe to serve that goal, you might each talk about you know what you find most rewarding about mm-hmm. your volunteering and what kinds of things you know people could look forward to participating in if they were to volunteer for your organization well I believe in volunteerism Mm -hmm. I just it's it's what I do and there are so many ways that being a volunteer for a cause that you believe in yeah um, connects you with people with similar values yeah and um, it's true. You, you know, there, there comes a time in all, any phase of our lives where um, 
people you were friends with at work, you might stop working, you have a family. Yeah. So those friends sort of disappear. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when the children are in a certain age at school, you might have those mm -hmm. friends from the PTA mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, things disappear. You move, you start over. Mm -hmm. Volunteering is just, it's so rewarding. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels good. So, yeah. so I do it, you know, bec because for what it gives me. Yeah. And so, uh, and then of course you're offering something to the group, and everybody has something different to offer. So that collaboration and that exchange of ideas. Um, forges uh, very strong friendships. Yeah, and um, and and there's no age limit. It's true. You, there's, you know, there's, <laughs> there's young friends and yep. there's older friends yeah. and there's uh, people from all different walks of life. Yep. Uh, so whatever group you're volunteering mm -hmm. with is going to bring you an enrichment. Yep. that's right. Of of. Uh, of people that you would yeah. not have met otherwise. That's very well put, Jeanette. Yeah, thank really you. well put. So um, you give, mm -hmm. but but you you get much more than you yeah. give, much much more. Yeah. So um, so I I don't know. I think if anybody and and sometimes you know when people are shy about going out and mm -hmm. finding a place mm -hmm. for themselves. That's the way to do it, because yeah. you're going to always be welcome. Yep, that's Nobody's right. Nobody's going to say, no, we don't, we don't like you. They love you. I'll come and work for free for <laughs> you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And people yeah. love you. That's right. So, and know, appreciate you. Yeah, too. So, yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, if, you, if you're not egocentric and you just right. want to be part right. of a group and... Right. And, and you're going to meet other people who are also interested in being part of a group right. but doing good things, things That's that make right. the world or relationships yeah. something, make things yeah. better. And so before so. you know it, 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 it goes outside of the group mm -hmm. and, you know, you're friends with people that right. you, in the new report, you're always going to we see right. each other coming and going. That's right. So you're going to see people right. and, and, and then deeper relationships right. forge outside yeah. of the volunteer family. Yeah. So... I think it's it's just I don't know what I don't know what my life would be like mm. if I didn't volunteer yeah. the way I do. I just I just don't know. I mean mm. I'm sure I'd do something but but this is what I love. <laughs> she got volunteer for the year, you know. Oh wonderful. Congrats on that. Got <laughs> two of them. Yeah, she got two. <laughs> yeah, I did. So and that was um, that, that, and you don't do it for that because yeah, there's a lot of people who do a yeah. lot more than what I do who somehow didn't get recognized mm -hmm. but it, it's awfully nice to have that yeah. and uh, and I got one bigger award but the, the Yankee Homecoming uh -huh. uh, Generations of Giving yeah. um, that meant so much because yeah. it was this is family. That's there you go. You know, I've right. been here forty years. Right. And, oh, that's and, wonderful. And left behind a whole yeah. different life. And this was this was a family that I've right. developed over these years. That's and wonderful. It's great. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Well, that's the best combination of volunteering I think I may have ever heard. <laughs> so thank you for that. It's very inspiring. Well, um, can I just throw? Yeah. The, uh, so that said. We really could use volunteers. <laughs> um, and um, I, like, I, I feel bad when someone comes into the shop and they say they're new to the area. I go, I got just the way to meet people. <laughs> yeah. We have this group that we need to volunteer. But um, no, we, it, we're really always looking for volunteers. Yeah. It, it's, you know, we're... Um, you know, a aging out. Some of us are aging out. <laughs> Not all. I mean, we have some young people, but um, we do dancing when we get a young person in. But um, you know, it, it, and it can be a little bit. It doesn't yeah. have to be that you're committing your your world to us. But, yeah. but um, or you might want to do more. You know, yeah. it's really up to you. And it is a, our group. I we, we we have a group that just really gets along. They're mm -hmm. yeah. very. I mean, in eleven years. I mean, yeah, fourteen years now. I mean, we just don't. We. Yeah. We share, we do the job, mm -hmm. we have fun, yeah. and 
um, it's just a it's a great group yeah. but we could definitely use you know I'm just can I just read off a few yes you may very quickly I know yes. we're probably running out of time but so anybody that's interested or has a skill set in these areas also would be helpful share them with us F fundraising mm -hmm. we always need you know we'd love someone to be on a fundraising committee with mm -hmm. us um, finance in terms mm -hmm. of um, you know the bookkeeping sure. end of it um, and databasing. Uh -huh. we, we do have some people working on that yeah. now, but we could always use more. Marketing is, we could yeah. love somebody with an expertise in marketing. Um, people that someone that wants to do outreach um, mm -hmm. and awareness, we could, you know, that's a committee that we mm -hmm. could do some help on. Any, you know, volunteering the day of the events mm -hmm. um, or getting more involved with the Lantern Festival or the 5K mm -hmm. in terms of the, you know, the pre organization sure. of it. So, those are just some general areas, yeah. but um, again, even if you only wanted to volunteer, just pass out flyers for us yep. for the day. Right. That's huge. That's absolutely mm -hmm. huge for yeah. us. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, oh. you can go to our website. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and email us, and I'll get the email. We'll send you a form yep. if you're interested in mm -hmm. um, volunteering in any right. shape or form. You don't have to Excellent. commit your life. Yeah. Right. No, it could even be um, working on a mailing. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. that's right. really fun. Affixing, right. affixing a stamp and stuffing mm -hmm. an envelope. Yeah. I mean, it's we sit and have cheese and wine and yeah. a stamp. <laughs> <laughs> cheese, wine, and a stamp. There yeah. you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, so for people who are interested in volunteering, it's clearly a very um, amenable, friendly, warm group of people yes. that you would yes. be meeting and interacting mm -hmm. with, yeah. and it could be as small as a you know uh, putting a stamp on a postcard yeah. or handing out flyers just for an hour or a day yeah. and then you may forge relationships that will make you want to stick around that's right yeah. you're likely yeah. to yeah. Well like, yeah. so thank you yeah. for that yeah. well yeah we're we're running out of time for today yeah. um, just could you give the URL for the website it's GNOCA yeah. no it's, it's actually OC that's right that's right. awareness OC awareness org. Org. and yeah. what you can do is email us there's some forms but it's hard to find them in the mm -hmm. website so if you email us and we'll email you a form that you can okay. fill out um, Right. Um, it's very simple form. It's just right. to us, you know, to keep track of it. Mm -hmm. We're also looking for people that might be interested in putting a yard sign for the 5K on their lawn. And we okay. can, you can All pick right. them up at Greetings by Design, or you can, we can deliver it to you. Mm -hmm. So if you ask for that in the email, we can send yeah. you the form for that. And just to be clear, Greetings by Design is Deb's store yeah, yeah. at Market Square. Right. So yeah. anyway, yeah, pick up a lawn sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pick up a lawn sign. That's and an easy way to volunteer. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's just right. put it on your lawn and then we'll come get it for you. You don't have to bring it back. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. I've really enjoyed talking to you. I've learned a lot and it's just been fun to have you yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's it for today, everybody. Um, but please join us again next Thursday at 9 for the morning show. Until then, everybody, just be well. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Thank you so much. Thank you.